Hey guys, NS Productions 8104 here, and today we're going to do a new series called Monthly Model Showcase, where I will showcase every month one or two local models that I will not do a review on, I haven't done a review on, or there's already so many reviews out there about these local models, there's no point of me actually doing it. So today, we are going to be looking at the newest release of the Scale Trains ES44s, specifically two of their heritage units, the 8104 and the 8114, the Interstate, and the original Norfolk Southern Scheme. But first, we're going to get a little history on the General Electric Evolution Series. GE's Evolution Series was created to replace the older AC 4400s and the Dash 9 series created in the early, in the late, mid to late 90s. The first pre-production model ever created was General Electric 2005. Which was created in Mar which was finished in March of 2002. Now, this was not one of the only. This was not to be the only pre-production model. GE went on to build 54 others, including GE CX number 2011, which was built in April of 2003, which is an ES44 DC, and 2005 is an ES44 AC. Eventually, uh. 30 were delivered to BNSF, and they were the AC variants of the ES-44s. And in 2004, Norfolk Southern took delivery of 17 DC versions of the model, which eventually both owners came to love and actually bought the pre-production units, and are still active to this day, especially on Norfolk Southern. Numbers 70... Oh, I can't remember. It was like, uh... Ah, yes! Yeah, 70... Yeah, 7500 to 7516 are the original pre-production ES44 DCs. But as we all know, no folks, it doesn't have them derated to 4,000 horsepower. So, without further ado, let's get into a quick look over of these beautiful models. All right, so let's get into the, real quick. Let's take a look at the details on the Scale Trains ES44s. So these are going to be pretty standard. These are pretty standard to Scale Trains quality. Sort of a flat wire grab irons going up the nose, on top of the nose, around the nose, all over this thing. Gets definitely by grab irons on the front. There's none on the rear or on the sides because these are the later production versions. You got see through plastic steps on both sides, all the way around. You got nice. Uh, your scale trains knuckle couplers, that old knuckle couplers, working ditch lights, lit number boards, working ground lights, operating headlight, and then again on the rear, you got working uh, rear light and ditch lights, plus working walkway lights on the front, rear, and engineer side of the locomotive. Now, these ones are supposed to stand in for the PTC era, so these are like 2016 up. Uh, rotating bearing cats, all the same fuel tank details, uh, chain, all the standard details, tip it up, you can see all the nice wiring underneath, traction motor cabling, all that stuff. On um, both of these models, you got see-through etched metal grills on the rear here and here. These ones are painted so they're a little bit hard to see, but these are there. So we apply a brake wheel on the uh, conductor side, bunch of detailing the paint. Now to the paint, the paint is nice and sharp, I love the orange is sharp with the gray and then the cream. And then again, the orange cab, which looks amazing. And then you got clear black printed 8105. And then again, on the number boards. And then now we're going to go to the Norfolk Southern unit. You got the nice pretty red. Then you got the black stripe on the top, black underframe, yellow sill stripe. This one's got a white. The separation lines between all this is good, even over these etched metal parts. They look amazing. I'm not seeing, there's no fuzz or nothing. They're clean and crisp over all etched metal parts on these things. This is a very complicated paint scheme for the new with the uh, lining going through these grills and stuff. And they have done, are done flawlessly, found no issues. These two are great runners, great pullers. And then in the next scene, we're going to take them to the new pull test, which I described in the beginning. Alright guys, we're at the next segment here, the pull test. Now, as you can see, we're on, on the ground because if any of you have watched some of my early, later videos, 
My floor is very uneven, which makes a perfect testing ground for pulling power of locomotives on flat track, uphill, and downhill running. So here we go. We got the two General Electric ES44s here. This, no, fuck, Southern versions, of course. Combined with a nice strand of coal hoppers, which are loaded with live coal. See? Live coal loads, so these things are heavy. And we got a Le Grand total of... Fourteen cars. Now the grade that's going up this way, aka the local, which way the locomotives are facing, is a little bit shallower than the grade on that side. We will eventually turn the, take these engines off, turn them around, and run them up the other way. So this is what we're gonna do for the pull test. We're gonna test the two locomotives. Actually, you know what? I just thought of something. We're gonna do this up a little bit. We're gonna test one. We are going to test the pulling power of one of these locomotives with 14 heavily loaded coal hoppers up about a 3% grade. Now, if the locomotive can't do it, we'll stop the train, we'll take the other engine, and we'll tack it on the rear and see if both of them can do it. If that's so, then great. But after we get the end train back, we're going to take off the rear helper, and we're going to take off coal hoppers until we can figure out how many of this thing can pull up a 3% grade. So, I'll be right back. Let me go and grab my throttle so we can do this test. Alright. So, let's turn on the headlight. Headlights on. Ditch lights. And we'll turn on the sound. Here's a quick sound demo, too. Now watch the headlight. See how it dims and then brightens back up? It's pretty typical to how the actual locomotives start up. So here we go. Once this is finished the start up process, we'll blow the horn, we'll roll out, we'll see if this engine can hold 14 loaded coal hoppers with live coal low loads up about a 3% of grade. Alright, engine's falling on. There we go. We're at five speed stacks. Now, this engine's kind of getting the boost because the way the train is sitting, it's sitting on the downhill grade. So it might, so it might get a little extra help when it's coming, starting up. But here's the true test. We're going for the crossing right here. All right, we are doing 15 speed steps out of 280. So here we go. We are at 20 now. And the late locomotive, and the locomotive is about to hit the grid. To give you a little bit of information, the first five cars, coal hoppers on this train, are the brand new scale trains operator cars. So they are pretty chunky for cars. Now, the next nine cars are the old Walters Gold Line Beth Gone Hoppers. If you watched one of my recent lay, uh, my latest layout update, you would know I picked up four more of these cars at my latest train show. Um, so far, we got about six cars on the grade, and seems to be struggling a little bit. Now, the way this track is configured, it turns almost after it goes out of the tunnel. So, right about now, the locomotive is actually going around a curve. It goes around a slight S curve and then does the 90 degree turn. Ooh. It's really bogging down. But it's doing it at 25 speed steps. All right. We have officially stalled. Okay, so 14 cars fully loaded is too heavy for the scale trains ES44. Now keep in mind, these engines, real, realistically, I would never run these two, lo these locom this locomotive by itself, trying to pull a 30 car grain, uh, coal train up a hill by itself, fully loaded with live coal loads. 
So, because we didn't stall in a place where I couldn't reach it, we're going to back the train down and we're going to cut off two cars. And we'll see if that can do it. And the reason, and reason why we're not, I'm just not cutting off two cars and starting again because it's unfair. It's got the whole load behind it on the hill. It's not giving it a fair chance. But what we'll do is, unlike last time where it started up with most of the train on the downhill part of the grade, we're going to stop the locomotive to about where the cars are at the edge of the screen here. Right to about there. Then, from there, I'll stop it, and we'll throttle back up the 25 speed steps, and we'll try to bring it, do it again. If it stalls again, we'll continue to repeat the process until we can determine how many cars these locomotives can pull. Because I don't have a pull tester, that's something I've been wanting to get. But once I can actually get an actual <clears throat> device actually testing the pull power, pulling power of these things, this is what we're going to have to do. And not only that, but this is fun. This actually gives me a realistic idea of what I can do with these engines. Alright, we are at the bottom of the grade. I've already cut off the two cars. But here we go. I'm going to do slower increments up. I'm just going to, I'm just standing here. I'm going to really sit here going like this. Up to about 25. Which is right about now. Here we go. We're going to upgrade at 25 speed stats with 12 fully loaded coal hoppers. And these are the original factory weights. I have done no extra weighting to these cars. They're all factory weights. I've not added in any weights because the way I see it is when I build my Norfolk Southern Horseshoe Curve uh, Pittsburgh line with the Horseshoe Curve, I'm going to run live coal trains. So there's no point in me adding weight when I'll just run live coal and most of the cars by then will be heavy. And if they're lighter, then they're going to get stuck at the end. Like, the... Okay, well, good news is it looks like we're making it further than last time. We're probably at about the 90 degree bend. Ooh. Ooh. It's barely doing it with 12 cars. Alright. It's officially stalled. No. What I classify as a stall is that the train can no longer do it on its own. And it's no longer nudging. Alright. It's officially stalled. So once again, back the train down the hill, cut off two more cars, and we'll try this process again. We're going to do this for every locomotive of the month. Now, if it's rated to pull pat, if it's a passenger locomotive, it's going to be different. We're not going to do this test. And if it's a steam locomotive, then we really ain't going to do this test because... The car, these are too modern of cars, and they're too big. Well, <clears throat> eventually, I will be getting some steam car, uh, steam air cars again, and we can do this test prop, and then we can do test. If the locomotive is a steam engine, we can do it with proper air freight cars, so we're not overloading it. All right, here we go with ten fully loaded coal hoppers. Going back up to twenty-five speed steps. Don't mind the Lego tunnel that's disappearing into that's protected from wires from my workbench. So that way the trains don't get caught up in the wires when they try to go when they run around the room. It's actually very in it's actually very helpful. It also helps kind of muffle the noise when they go into the under the bed. Alright, here we go. Ten fully loaded coal hoppers going up the grade. We're looking a little better. Ah, it's at the 90 degrees. This is the difficult, most difficult part of his journey. Ooh, it's struggling. All right, it's stalled. 
it stalled. I will say, I had my hopes up that this thing could pull at least 10 cars on its own, but I guess not. So, here we go. Eight fully loaded coal hoppers up about a 3% grade with steep curve, with some curves. Now, keep in mind, these curves aren't very sharp. These are t almost 27-inch curves. These are pretty light curves for these locomotives. All right, here we go. Back at the grade. And we're only doing 25 speed steps because I have found that's about the happiest place for the most traction and yet speed. 30, you get more speed than traction, so you're going to lose pulling power based off of speed. Let's hope this can do it now. Because if not, we're going to have to send the other engine after it to go save its rear end, which I really don't want to do because because I just don't want to. I don't want to risk a derailment underneath the bed and have a bunch of coal spill. But I will not be testing the Norfolk Southern unit because they are about the same weight. They might be a couple ounces off, but I'm not going to do a test on two identical locomotives internally. The only thing that's different about these engines externally is the fact that that of the paint scheme. We stall again? I don't know. We did not stall. We are still crawling up the grade. And I mean, this thing got down real, real slow. About maybe more to scale miles an hour from what it was originally doing. There it is. It actually made it. All right. So now we know eight coal hoppers is about what this thing can do unassisted. So we'll slow it down. We'll send her back down the hill. Pick up these other cars. We'll throw on the other locomotive. We'll throw on a couple cars and we'll really, and let's really work these two, shall we? All right. I'll catch you guys when I get the net train all set up. All right, so here we go. This is with the two scale trains ES 44s, the 14 loaded coal hoppers, plus I've tacked on about eight of my heaviest freight cars I have. Sorry, seven. So in grand to in total, this is a 21 car train, but. This train consists of some of the heaviest cars I own. Because I either I've added weight, they got loads on them, or they came from the factory as heavy. Like these Atlas cars, man, these are some of the heaviest cars you can get on the market. But because they're heavy, they also track nicer. Alright, so here we go. We're going to do 25 speed stats, just like the original test. With two locomotives, and if we stall, I have some Dash 9s programmed in with this consist, and we'll throw those on at the end as needed. So here we go. Ah! So bad. Oh, looks like the snowball's gonna come off the zone angle. Here we go. So here we go. Where we are at. 25 speed steps, and we are heading up the grade. So here we go. 25 cars, some of the heaviest cars in my fleet, and we're crawling up the grade. So far, the two locomotives and about the first three cars are on the grade. So far, so good. Just a, a word of warning to any of you guys who have planned on buying this round of scale trans locomotives. 
This round of ES44 is in the latest round of Dash 9. Their snow plows are a little low, and they are clipping some of the imperfected track. So just as a warning to you guys, if you guys are planning on picking up these locomotives, or have them, if you guys noticed, mm, the snow plows are a little lower than previous runs. Ooh, we're struggling. Most all the coal hoppers are now on the grade, and now it's these last seven heavier freight cars. But sounds like the locomotives are over the crest of the hill and are now coming down the other side. Go take a look. Yep, there they are. They're cresting the hill. So yes, two scale trains ES forty fours can haul this heavy of a train. I am very impressed with these locomotives. Individually, they can only haul about eight. But if you think about it, two of them have just pulled the equivalent of maybe two and a half of the process that we tested with the single engine alone. Now, here's the other question. Can these two locomotives keep this train under control? Because I've ran some model trains, especially at my old railroad club before we had to tear it down. I ran a pretty long, heavy freight train, and it actually started to push those engines down the hill a little bit. Granted, it's nothing like this. It's nothing like 14 loaded coal hoppers. So far, the coal hoppers have not been bashing the knuckles of the locomotive. All the knuckles are still tight, which is good to hear, good to see. As soon as those knuckles... Ah... The first car is now officially pushing against the lead locomotives. Oh, wow, a lot of them just did. But looks like the train, looks like the locomotives are keeping the train under control and the bashing knuckles are not going too far back. That flat car that just went by is a pretty heavy car. 32,000 hoppers are already pretty hefty cars. Plus that car... Plus the original weight of the roundhouse, yeah, that's a roundhouse car. Roundhouse flat car, that's a pretty decent one, heavy car. All right, well, that's cool to see. Now, let's kick this train up, and we'll watch it come down the hill at about uh, 50 speed sets. We'll do twice the speed. See how this thing does. Here they come. I will say this. These locomotives look right at home holding this long line of NS hoppers. Oh, at the higher speed, these knuckles are bashing sooner. But it does not look like it's affected the lead locomotives. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this new series, which I am calling Monthly Model Showcase. Where every month I will show off a model that either I have not done a full ill in depth review, or I will not be because of the fact that it's either a second run, an older production, or just an older model, or it's an engine that's already been mo reviewed so many times by other viewers, other channels. So this is going to be basically like a quick, real quick review of what these models have to offer and what you're getting for your money. Now, the overall verdict of these two locomotives, individually, these guys score pretty high. They got great detail, great sound, great pulling power, and they look phenomenal. Their price tag, the price tag from Scale Trains is $299.99. With and these are the ESU Locksal V5 V5 equipped models. 
You can get these locomotives for DCC ready for $209.99 directly from Scale Trains or via one of their retailers. So if you guys are looking, and you better hurry because some of these models are already sold out. Scale Trains has got a very limited quantity of these ES44s left. They're Southern. They announced four Norfolk Southern Heritage Unit schemes uh, this first, the second run. They announced the two that you saw tonight. Plus, they also announced the Pennsylvania Union and the Southern. The Southern unit is sold out in both DCC Ready and DCC Sound versions. As of the making of this video, the DCC versions with of uh, the Pennsylvania unit are still in stock, but very limited. Same thing with the Norfolk. Uh, no. Sorry, Norfolk Southern is completely sold out in the DCC Ready and Sound versions. So you can only get the Pennsylvania unit and the Interstate unit via scale trains. Now, you, if you can do some digging, you can probably find one out there on Facebook Marketplace, eBay. But just be cautious of their prices because, like I said, you can get these directly from scale trains for $299.99 with Sound or $209.99 with DCC Ready. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Please stay tuned because the next monthly model showcase will be MTH's version of the GS4 Daylight. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next showcase.